David. I'm host of Vintage Comic Show and Tell. And today, we're lucky we have Mick with us. How you doing, Mick? Good. Today, he's going to show us some Western comic books from his personal collection. And these are fantastic. So with no ado at all, we're just going to get started. So what do we have today? Uh, I brought a sort of a hodgepodge of different things, mostly just DC and Atlas. So okay. um, I thought I'd start with a cool Atlas book. This is... Uh, a it's called Two Gun Kid, and it is uh, number 49. It's kind of a, a cool issue because it has um, not one, but not two, but three Severin, John Severin stories in it. Uh, and there's a singular Colan story in there also, Gene Colan. But the, uh, the Severins are, like to get a, any comic book with three Severin stories in it is really spectacular. So I don't know if people watching this are even familiar with the genre and Severin. Um, can you just kind of talk about him for a minute? Because sure. I know that you're a huge fan. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Severin is actually pretty well known for a run on Sergeant Fury. Uh, so a lot of people that are sort of familiar with the, the Marvel Universe may be more familiar with his stuff from Sergeant Fury. Right. He did some other things with Marvel, including um, Cull, and uh, he did a lot of things with uh, Westerns. But um, the stuff that's pre- Marvel, like the the pre Fantastic Four stuff, is is known widely as Atlas, as a lot of people know that, and um, his Atlas output actually was was impressive, um, right? And and it, it happened to to uh, coincide, but it also continued on after his association with EC Comics. So a lot of people are familiar with the, his his classic stuff on EC, like Two Fisted Tales and um, and and the different titles within EC. He actually also is pretty well known for Cracked, Cracked Magazine, you know, which was the kind of the alternative to Mad Magazine. So uh, he's he's played in all the genres and he is widely beloved by a lot of different collectors. But getting him to do DC DC uh, Western uh, and three stories in one book makes that a pretty cool book. Yeah, it's about it's probably like a VF copy, maybe an eight O. How long have you had this? Twenty years. Wow, so, something like that. Was it hard to get when you got it? I haven't seen a copy <laughs> like. I mean, I I don't see copies like that. You yeah. know, they don't. It's not like they're out there in the wild. If you ever see it, it'll be, you know, it'll be a good, at best. So when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll take that. I've always liked the trade dress on these, um, and I really dig that sunset. Yeah. In the colors. So. Yeah. It's funny because you see so many uh, Western comic books in low grade and they're just not that impressive. Yeah. As you start to grade up and, and they start to really present well, that's when you start really paying attention to the artwork. It's almost like it gets lost if it's not. Yeah. Not I mean, I, yeah. when they're 10 cent atlases, you know, that range <laughs> is just so difficult to find in grade. Yeah. And when you, when you get to see them in nice shape like that, that's, a, that's just exquisite to be able to see that. Pretty book. Here's another one. This is uh, another Atlas Western. It's called Kid Slade, uh, Gunfighter. And uh, what I love about this one in particular is the, the little vignette on the sides, yeah. you know, the, the bottom and the, the top, the little margins. It's almost like, you know, before Sergio Aragones did it for Mad Magazine, Manili was doing it. Joe Manili was doing it for this cool little run of Kid Slade slash Matt Slade. Uh, and this was a this was a Western title by Atlas again, again like see this one in the wild like that in in nice shape. It's just that's you know, an awesome you, you book. Don't, you don't turn it down, and now now you know people are kind of looking for these a little bit more. I don't know that it's necessarily because they have the little vignettes on the side, but it seems like um, anytime I look on you know, eBay or whatever that they're not they're not around. I like the vignettes as much as the picture box going on. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know which one I like more yeah. because of how chiseled he looks. Yeah. And he's backed against a wall like that. Yeah. Kinda Manili, a, he kind of has a Clint Eastwood vibe to him, pre-Clint Eastwood. So, yeah, I'm yeah. Dig, I dig that. Manili had yeah. a lot. There's um, a super dynamic panels, and always the composition was just, like, spot on. Yeah, he pretty knew, dope. He knew what he was doing. Yeah, he did. All right, well, so this one is Rawhead Kid 22. Uh, yeah. And it's... It's kind of known amongst collectors as a, an anomaly. It's a bit of an anomaly. And the reason why is because 
Rawhead Kid, first of all, is, is, a, is a coveted run among Western collectors because it's got a lot of Kirby. Uh, in fact, the Kirby that appeared in, um, in Rawhide Kid as a run is it's actually one of the earliest kind of like Marvel Age books uh, that predates Fantastic Four by quite a bit and, uh, and carried on into the superhero age. So a lot of times, a lot of people think of these early Rawhide Kids as being um, not quite like superhero cop because they're, they're Westerns. They're often considered like proxy um, Marvel Age books. Okay. So, um, but the other cool thing about it is that it's got a, a monster on the cover and there's four monster books uh, from the, the Atlas and Prehero Marvel Westerns, and this yeah. is this is one of them. All right. So this one here is is Gunsmoke Western. We were talking about um, Severin earlier, John Severin, uh, and this is the first time that Severin he started a run in Two Gun Kid and was later associated with that character in the Two Gun Kid run. But Gunsmoke Western is kind of like an anthology title, and uh, has a great Kirby cover to it. Uh, when I got it, I just couldn't believe what kind of grade it was. It's probably like a 7.5, maybe, maybe an 8 on a good day. And it just uh, is super, super difficult. I spent, I spent 30 years trying to get a decent copy of that book. Oh, wow. I finally landed on a nice copy. So how often do these come up? I mean, in a, in a long wait like that, because I don't know if I've ever waited that long for, I know as a fact I haven't. I no. took a break. So. No, no. I mean, to, to be clear, if it was not 57, but if it was 56 or if it was 58, I would have bought the 56 or the 58. Just, you know, seeing any number, any number in that range of that anthology title of Gunsmoke Western um, that has the early Kirby and some really nice Severin um, that kind of lasted into the Marvel Age. I think those are really great books. Uh, it, it's a 10 center that's before the, the circular 10 cent. I noticed that. Yeah. I noticed that, that the 10 cents took Tucked right here. Yeah. Really, but, really low key. It just doesn't look like it doesn't. And it's not, it's not that big of a deal to most like people. But if you, but if you think about it, that 10, that, um, you know, Fantastic Four that's got the circular 10 cent um, and later the, the circular 12 cent, yeah. you know, that's, that gives you a sense of, of how late those were in comparison to some of these Westerns. Um, here's yet another West, a Gunsmoke Western. Same run, a little bit later. What I love about this one, it's, well, it's got the circular 12 cents, so that gives you a sense of how old it is. But, uh, but also just the, the panels on this, you know, it's just like, it's kind of, it's Kirby, uh, when he's left to, to his own devices, being able to tell uh, this, this narrative in, a, you know, in the course of, what, eight panels or something like no that. No word bubbles either, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah the, the grade is, is uh, it's probably like a fine plus or, Fine, very fine, and I, I jumped on it as soon as I possibly could. Yeah, that's a pretty book. Uh, another Western from Atlas is this one. It's called Wild Western, and it has this this Heath cover, you know. And so um, Russ Heath is beloved by a lot of Western and war collectors. He's he's one of the main reasons I even collect that genre. I, I don't really... Uh, love any particular like storyline in in them. They're 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 fine, but really to look at the the art on the inside and on on the covers on some of these is is off the charts. He is one of the the one one of those collectors that is beloved by you know war and western collectors alike. And if you look at the composition of this with the horse and the way he's jumping over some gorge, you know it just it's it's got everything you want in a Heath book. It's powerful. So, were you reading other books, like Marvel books, superhero books, and then gravitated towards this, or did you kind of break your teeth on these and go backwards into the golden age as you came up? A little bit of both. I started reading war comics, and uh, and I'll show you some of those later. But like, uh, I started reading war comics when I was a kid, along with superheroes. As a teenager, I started collecting Marvel, so I was like collecting Daredevil. Frank Miller Daredevil was, you know, kind of like the entry drug, and and then from there, kind of going backwards in, with Frank Miller's uh, run on Dark Knight, you know, yeah. that, that, was, that was in my later teen years. And I was like, you know, this, this Batman sort of narrative is something I read when I was a kid, but now I'm reading as a, as a teenager and really digging these, this kind of dark character. What other artists have, have you know, done Batman? And Neil Adams came up and other 
you know, these other artists and I've started to look further and further back at comics and wanting to explore different genres and different, not just superheroes, but finding that on my income, I, I can't really afford to buy the super uber expensive stuff. So I'm going to buy cheap, you know, war and Western things that, you know, I could, on, on my salary, I can afford to pay for a, even a, a nice high grade copy. Right. Um, that was back then. It's funny because I don't think as a genre, Westerns are hot. No. They're not hot. No. But there's certain covers that people will be like, yeah, I'll take that. A lot of people may have never seen these covers and, and don't stop to look twice. But when you do, and, and I mean this, they're striking. It, it's like a stunning art that I guess if you're not, if you're really not looking for a war comic, or you're really not looking for a Western, you're going to breeze past those and not even look at them. But these are the issues. These are issues that, that you have found along the way to either be really hard to get, yeah, right? Or they're not cold or not. These books are not cold because if a high-grade copy came up, it'd sell. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, I mentioned sort of the, the, the origin or the, the pa pathway to collecting war and Western um, but one of the motivating factors was always the art itself. I'm just yeah. interested in, in looking at art. And, um, and so when you're looking at something and it's a war book that you could buy for say $10 in high grade, this is, I'm dating myself, but some, let's say it's late eighties, <laughs> right? Late eighties. And I can buy, you know, this war comic for say $10, or I could spend a hundred dollars on a, a Marvel that is doesn't have the art it doesn't have the cool art it's it's a marvel and it's got the avengers or it's got somebody yeah. that's cool in there but it doesn't have the art i'm like well i'm going to go for the one with the art and that's how that sort of evolved into what i started to collect so a lot of the stuff gotcha. it's got the art in it you know it doesn't necessarily have these these highly compelling characters that are now part of the marvel universe and and there's no pro i mean i have no issue with it. i think those are great those are killer books but I could never afford them at those kinds of prices if I wanted them in high grade. And right. I wanted them in nice grade. Hearing about what makes the book special really kind of gives you more acute of a feeling like I appreciate that book now, where I might have just looked over yeah. it. So, yeah. yeah, so like it's oftentimes you're looking through the stacks and you might see a good or a, you know, a fair or a beat up copy and, and you're, you kind of keep thumbing through. Um, but then when something like this sort of pops out, you look at it and you're like, wait, wait yeah. hold on a second. Hold, just hold your horses. Check that out. So this is? Yeah, Western Kid number eight. And um, <clears throat> Western Kid eight is, uh, this is a Sid Shores cover. Uh, it's got this kind of snow motif with the guy uh, who's, you know, the Western Kid. And he's got the antagonist draped over the horse, presumably dead. It's a couple of things about this one. I was trying to purchase something else. And you know, us collectors, we're gonna sell stuff every once in a while so we can purchase whatever that other grail thing right. is. And I, I just foolishly sold this to a friend of mine, but this friend of mine was super nice and he was kind enough to sell it back to me. And, uh, and I, I owe him for it, so I really appreciate it. But there's another funny thing about this one. What, it's not just that it's a great cover. Um, there's a far side panel cartoon that is maybe 80s, I don't know, mid 80s to late 80s or something. You know, it's Gary Larson's Far Side. Right. It's almost spot on like a, a copy of that. What I consider a classic, you know, Gary Larson. That's movie. awesome. Yeah. All right. So we, we did some of the atlases. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, DC. Um, so we'll start with Western comics. Yeah. Probably the least interesting run of all the DCs. You yeah. know, there's so many people that collect um, Marvels, but there's fewer people that collect DC. But then, of the people that collect DC, I mean, almost nobody collects Western comics. Right. It's just so incredibly boring. <laughs> but it also happens to have some of the greatest art uh, from from roughly like fifty eight to sixty one, roughly roughly that time period. And included in that is. Uh, is stuff where it's Infantino, it's a, uh, sorry, it's Carmen Infantino inking himself. And I, I wanna be clear about this. When we're talking about him inking himself, it's different than when people are familiar with like that the Flash stuff. People know about what Flash looks like. Um, so who was known for inking uh, Infantino? Infantino was inked commonly by Joe Giella, mm -hmm. uh, Sid Green, I think, and also um, Giacoya. And there's a couple other inkers that are, are pretty 
pretty well known for inking Infantino. Murphy Anderson inked Infantino, but didn't do much in the way of flash. Murphy Anderson inked um, mostly Infantino with like Adam Strange, right, um, and and things like that. So, but uh, I don't think Infantino was served well by most of them. I think I think the good the, the clear exception to that is Murphy Anderson, who's beloved. Like the Infantino Anderson stuff is is widely coveted by a lot yeah, of collectors, I'm more and of that. and rightly so. Yeah. But when Infantino wasn't being inked by uh, by Anderson. It's, it's harder to like his stuff, and I personally struggle with it. I was just like, I don't get it. What's the big deal with Flash? I, and then a friend of mine showed me uh, Infantino inking himself, and that's what's inside here. Okay. Uh, so we've got some panels that we can show from that. And what's, what's also noteworthy about this one is that it's got the wash tone cover. So uh, with the dark, dark, deep blue on that, it's super hard to get in grade. But uh, but to get you know the wash tones, which are some people know them as painted covers, but um, colloquially in, in comics world they're known kind of as these wash tones or gray tone covers. So you collect you collect gray tones. I do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and you across go across genres. Yeah. Across genres. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So so this one is All Star Western '88, and uh, for this this has got a lot of cool things going for it. Not to not not in the least is the the um, Infantino inking himself, right? But um, the the cover on this is is pretty striking. If you, you know, if you look at that, it's got these um, vignettes on the side where it's Kane inking himself, much like we were talking about with the Infantino, right? But it's Kane Kane now, Gil Kane inking himself on the cover with those little vignettes on the side, and okay. that is that is also just just a special thing because again, and this is a, this is a parallel thing. You know, uh, as as Infantino was often inked by different artists uh, for his run on on Adam and and Green Lantern. Like, why is why do people so many people love this thing other than it's being a superhero? And uh, and then a friend of mine showed me the Kane inking himself stuff, and that's that's a different ball game. Yes, very. It's like they let him do very it. Sharp, they just man. let him go, and they're like, okay, we've got. All these other inkers covering you, but if you really want to go to town and do something really impressive, then you can do it on this title that's becoming less popular anyways. This came a little bit later, but this is All-Star Western again. And again, this is a, a nice Western cover. I swear, like, this one ticks off all the boxes. It's got everything you need. It's got uh, Gil Kane inking himself. It's a wash tone. It also has Gil Kane doing water. It's not just like in the ocean, but this is like Kane doing a flash flood in the middle of the desert, you know, and he's got the waves. And if you look closely at the waves, there's a certain way that they kind of like form these little arcs. The white wash on the wave, you know, has a certain view. It's, it's as good as it gets. And it also has a killer uh, Kane on Kane it almost story. looks like a photograph on the faces. The back cover is just as fascinating. We got to talk about this for a second. Yeah. Well. Yeah. There you go. In, you know. I was, I was chatting with a friend of mine about how they used to sell guns to kids in comic books. Oh sure. So. Yeah. That's how we we got to where we are now. So. <laughs> but here we go. I mean, yeah. it, you got a whole set here. You can have a handgun, all the way to a sighted gun. Yeah. That's a fantastic cover. It's very different it's weird it's to the point of weird because yeah. that does look like a photograph he's yeah. stuck on there yeah um, just the the way that he's got expect, so the yeah. horse the composition just everything about it is so it's like everything is like in action it's it's ready to just jump yes, off the page it's yep it stands out in the crowd um this is a from another title called hopalon Casty, which actually had been a faucet title and dc took it over in i think Eight, issue 86 if I'm remembering right somewhere around there is 80 they took it over in 86 and then um, by the time it got up to this range they were again including a lot of Infantino inking himself and Kane inking himself this one in particular though has a wash tone cover that's, that's tough really hard to get in grade and uh, I got that many years ago I was thrilled to get it so it's got these pastel colors that you don't see very often yeah um, right with these really light lime greens and the, this yeah. lavender and yeah. as you look into it, it I mean the color palette here is huge it doesn't feel like a DC you know you're looking at it it's like it's got the DC bullet but 
it doesn't look like you know the typical stuff that was coming it's out by DC. Very different. So this is uh, another Hopalon Cassidy. The, the colors on it are crazy, you know. And when you again when you see this, which is rare in any grade, I swear I've, I've maybe seen in my entire collecting career I've maybe seen less than five of these ever in any grade. But when you do see it, it's not going to be in high grade. When I saw that, I, I just about cried. I, I, could, <laughs> I could not believe that it was in that kind of condition. So yeah, like about a VF plus or something like that. It's that beautiful. Copy. Yeah, this this one stood out to me as we were looking at. This yeah, stuff. it's got that sunburst. This, this is, is actually the last in the run uh, of Western comics. I mean, you know, you want to talk about like sort of like just cheap, inexpensive stuff, and it's a ten cent book. It's the final one in the run. The Infantino on that is off the charts. Uh, inking himself again. It's all like, you know he's getting inked by these other people and they they decided yeah sure if you if you really want to go to town then go ahead and do it on these western titles because nobody cares about them anyways and we're going to cancel it so go for it and they let him have autonomy which uh which made that those stories so so spectacular that's fantastic you wouldn't know it it's necessarily nice by looking book. at the cover because the cover is nothing spectacular it's in nice shape but it's like it's not all that impressive a cover, but what's inside is is um, staggering, really nice. So, did he? How many books do you think he did his own inks on? Well, that's good. That's a good question. Um, I think if we're talking just Western comics itself, he started roughly in the mid '50s. I'm saying the mid '50 numbers, not the 1950s. Yeah. So roughly in the mid '50s, and then he did it in most of the issues from the 50s up to the mid 80s okay uh, so roughly 30 in that range similarly with Hopalong cassidy and similarly with the cane inking himself uh in all-star western okay are you a completist yeah i am i'm you know it's it's kind of a weird thing because nowadays when people are as obsessed as they are with cgc comics the reason the main compelling reason that i really like these is because of what's inside the comic yeah. So uh, I do want like the runs, you know, the consecutive numbers on a lot of these that include the great, you know, Infantino inking himself or Kane inking himself. That stuff is underappreciated and maybe not after this interview. So I tried my best to score all the all the copies before you all get it. But I, uh, but yeah, I mean, I tried I tried my best to to get these over the years and. What you see there is, is uh, I think, nicely representative of the, the, some interesting runs in the mix. There are so many other great Westerns that are um, underappreciated. Um, well, thanks for showing us those books and look forward to looking at some of the other stuff you have. And, yeah, you're uh, welcome. That was fun, man. It's fun. Thanks. It's fun talking about comics. But so. thanks for chatting with me and we're going to look at some more books. It's thanks totally everyone fun. for watching and uh, thanks. Bye.